Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today we're going to talk about this animation uh, in which we are morphing particles from one geometry to the other geometry. And I'm going to use the preset from my preset library. You can download them for free from the link in the description. So let's start. So here we're in Blender and uh, let's create a default cube. <laughs> a default cube. And I'm going to move that away. I also need to create a monkey. I think both of them are very representative in terms of Blender, so to for us to play with. And then I'm going to just uh, create a, a new object to create a node tree. Uh, basically, I want to select one cube and select uh, one monkey. Okay. So then I delete the group inputs. I will put the cube and the monkeys into another collection so I no longer see them or use them or any other things. And then I'm going to put uh, a amount of vertices onto it. Recently, I just uh, built a new preset, which is called the points uh, distribute. Okay, so this preset can basically help you to really set the um, correct amount of vertices uh, on the top of that, or uh, amount of points on the surface. So for example, one or two points, there are some inaccuracy, but generally speaking, it should be accurate. Okay. So once we set the particles on the cube, we set the particles on the Suzanne as well. Let's select them relative so that uh, they will be dis distributed at the correct place. Okay, next step. So let's uh, join geometry so that we can see both of them. Okay, next step is really just the morphing one particles to the other's location. Okay, so here what we are gonna do uh, is I'm um, going to set position so that we can change the position of our cube particles. Then I'm going to transfer the position, transfer attributes, take the position, and the based on the points, 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 vector, position into attributes point into targets and then finally plug that to position. So now we have everything disappeared. This is because our cube of particles actually goes to Suzanne. So in order to morph everything, I'm going to take a mix RGB node and by plug the positions into the place so we can switch their direction. So now by playing with this factor, we can actually see the morphing from all these kind of particles on the cube and then to the all the particles on Suzanne. A key within particle animation is that instead of moving all these kind of particles at the same time and reaching the destination at the same time, there should be a kind of delay. So let's uh, use a preset with called delay fourth and plug the fourth into factor. So now we have everything on the cubes, but if by playing this time, you can see there are some points that start to move, other points that stayed at the original place until they start to move as well. Okay, there is one problem I realized is that uh, there is some order that you can realize the points goes from one place to destination and the other place goes to destination, the other place the start goes to destination. So there is a kind of order which is not really the randomization we're looking for. So instead of using the index method, I'm going to use the random method by unticking this box. Here, we need to actually know the maximum amount of index. So let's just plug these points into the random index. So now if we play this animation again, then we can see it's completely randomized. Okay. You can even change the seeds to change the order. So this is also one way that you can play it. Here, instead of uh, keyframing these time values, I'm just going to use a preset which is called time info. Note that this time info usually is used in many different cases, but uh, in this particular case of delay for I will change this duration factor to be one because I'm already controlling the duration for how much time a point spent to reach their destination. So now if we play this animation, you can see very fast they reach the destination. So if you want to increase the time, then you can increase the duration. So it takes about 35 frames for a particle to reach its destination. And there's definitely 
the delay which is controlled by this step interval. Another level of delay is controlled by these variances, which is relative to the step interval. So you can play around these values. It might not be very prominent if you have a small low value of a step interval. So this is how it works generally. There is uh, also a loop function, but I don't think it's very useful in this particular case. But you can actually see there's... <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> So here we have basically finished this animation. I'm going to add a little bit more details to this animation, but basically this is almost it. So here what I'm going to do is, I feel like this animation is like too short in terms of the distance, like just from one place to the other. I would like to increase their distance a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an arc instead of a straight line, okay? So I'm going to use this offset value so that we can actually change all these kind of points. Here I'm also going to use the fold because I only need to arc when they are transiting instead of transiting all the time. So let's plug the fold into the z-axis and uh, immediately we can see the effect of the fact that our monkeys actually goes up but our, there's not really an arc. So what we do is to actually use a float curve to remap this entire function instead of going from 0 to 1. I'm going from 0 to 1 and back to 0. And let's take a mass, take a multiply, maybe 3, something like that, and then play the animation. We have an arc. So let's increase in this 3. Okay. So now we have this kind of whatever weird stuff. And next thing I'm going to do is to add some noise. Uh, noise is also very important when you're working with the particle. So let's take a noise 3D or a vector noise. I think both of them will be just fine. Mm, let's take a vector noise because... No, actually not a vector noise. It should be vector wiggle. Uh, then take a vector mass node and plug this vector into vector. Once we have done this, okay, what I'm going to do is to basically do the same, plug the same, but into the values. Here you need to realize these uh, values need to be minimum and maximum. So let's take a negative. So it's the original value, so it goes to negative and a positive value. So technically speaking, there should be a should be a noise but it may not be very obvious so here we can increase the factor so that it increase the amount of noise we can also increase the frequency but if you increase the frequency too much then this animation will just be probably it's still fine so let's increase this to even higher and you can see very jaggy amount of uh, animations or what you can do is to increase the amount so let's call the group input and I'm going to delete this first geometry since we're not using that and plug the amount together. So now within the amount we can actually control these values without going inside the node tree. So yeah basically this is yet maybe the amount of noise. Oh actually I do realize the fact that we need to use the evolution to control this noise. Unfortunately I actually forgot. So here, let's just uh, take the evolution or take the mass nodes to control the evolution scale. So now they should actually move when they are moving. Let's increase the duration to 120. So we can actually see when they are moving, there is noise, which is a very jaggy, jiggly flying on the sky, which means you need to actually decrease the frequency of your noise. So now you can actually see that all these kind of points is flying. Uh, this is kind of very wonderful. Uh, let's decrease the frequency again. So these are parametric things that you can play around with. Okay. So at the last we would like to render this. I think in the future you can render all these kind of points in either in EVN cycle. Because this is going to be the particle system in the future with particle nodes. But uh, in this case, what I guess I'm just going to point instance 
and the quantity instance dv sophia let's take a lower amount 4 to 1 radius 0 0.1 so now i have all this kind of a sophia particles which is being created okay so finally i would like to talk about the coloring because these are all geometry created within the node tree, so we have to use the set material node. And the set material node cannot add a material, so you have to add a material somewhere. Let's call it the emission. But uh, in this case, we still do not really change the color of these instances. So here, the un because the instances cannot carry any attributes and show them in the render, so we have to realize that. So we realize them and we need to actually take this output or this kind of colors to the instance. So I'm going to use the node which is called the index converge. This is not a perfect solution, it only works for a single instance. If you're working with multiple instance, then you want to use the attribute to instance node. They are very similar to each other, but using a little bit different methods. Anyway, I'm going to use this instance and finally create a Actually, just the transfer attribute. And I'm going to transfer the based on the index. So that's our index converge is working. Once we have this, we need to determine the target. So when we generate in this fourth, we're using the target before this set position. And then we're going to plug these delay fourth values into the attributes. Okay, and then output that. So within shader, let's go to shader views. We have this material, and I have this attribute. In the modifier, I'm going to run. I'm going to name this attribute as just a C, so that I type a C, plug into the color. So you can actually see how it actually has been shown. When it just starts, everything is black. When it ends, it everything is uh, white. If we only want this color transition occurring in the middle. Then we need to use this remap default. For example, let's take this output from the float curve. So now we only limit these color transitions in the middle when everything is flying. So we can plug this color into the emission as well, specular roughness, uh, take a mix RGB so that we can actually decide the colors. For example, reddish or darkness. Everything is just uh, up to you. Okay, but this is the principle. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.